Good morning. Our call to worship this morning is Isaiah 52, verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Amen. I ask you to uh, all stand as you are able, and uh, we will sing the national anthem. invite Roger to come forward and uh, read in Flanders Fields. Flanders Fields by John McRae in 1915 it was written. Now, I wasn't around then, of course. <laughs> but in Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. May we never forget. Thank you. This time we are going to see a short video called We Remember.
This time, welcome to our Remembrance Day service. And yes, so we do not forget. We do remember. In the way of announcements, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday at 1 p.m., all ladies are invited to come and help pack Christmas boxes, and the auxiliary will have a short meeting there as well. Second, have your Operation Christmas shoe boxes to the church by November the 16th, please. Um, third, annual meeting will be held Sunday, November the 28th after church. Please have all your reports to me by Sunday, November the, or by Wednesday, November the 17th. So I can make up the uh, agenda and I'll send all the reports out to you. This time I would like to lead you in our prayer of invocation. Peace. O oh, Heavenly Father, let your all-encompassing peace roll over us. Fill this sanctuary with your total peace. Help us, Holy Spirit, to rid our minds of anything that hinders this peace from calming our hearts and souls as we worship with you. Father, you have kept us safe in your arms of love and grace through this past week. This morning we gather to thank and praise you for your love and care. We acknowledge you and you alone are holy. We ask for a complete forgiveness for all of our sins. For the times we did not proclaim you as Lord of our lives, or just plainly did not think about you at all. Our songs this morning, he is our peace wonderful peace and i will remember thee are also completely dovetailed with today's message where is peace our bible text states very plainly that we have to put you first in our lives above all else and that is where we will find peace we look to you O oh lord for the peace we will receive at the communion ta communion table when we remember the prince of peace who died for us Father, when we pray to you, may you, may your peace fill us so that we can praise and glorify you in a respectful manner, worthy of acceptance by you. Hear us now as we individually and silently lift up our prayers to you. Peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, we pray, in fathomless bellows of love. Bless this service as glory and honor and praise and adoration we give to our triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. This time you get the opportunity to stand once again and we will sing number 614, He is our peace. We ask you to stand as you are able. Our peace, he is our peace, who 
has broken down every wall. He is our peace. He is our peace. Cast all your cares on him. For he cares for you. He is our peace. He is our peace. Cast all your cares on him. For he cares for you. Please be seated. Thank you, Mary Ann, or Mary Wing, for that wonderful song. This time I would like to offer a prayer for the offering that has been collected. Father God, as we come again to thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day that you have given us, a day when we stop and remember those who have given their lives so that we can have the freedoms that we have. Lord, we thank you that we can give back to this church, that we can give back to you, that as we look at all the things that we have, and the lives that have been shed because of it, we can only stop and say thank you, Lord, for we know you are in control of this world. So we thank you for the offering. We thank you for being our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our responsive reading is from Isaiah 54, verses 10 through 17. I'd like to lead you in that responsive reading at this time. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant peace be says the Lord has Afflicted city, lashed by storms, and not com comforted. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of sparkling jewels. And all your walls of precious stones. All your children will be taught by the Lord. And great will be their peace. In righteousness you will be established. Tyranny will be far away. You will have nothing to fear. Terror will be far removed. It will not come near you. If anyone does attack you, it will not be my doing. Whoever attacks you will surrender to you. See, it is I who created the blacksmith, who fans the coals into flame. And forges the weapon fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. No weapon forged against you will prevail. And you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the prayer of the servants of the Lord, and this is a dedication from me to praise the Lord. Amen. Wonderful peace. It's the name of our next song, number 743, and we ask you to stand, please.
Please be seated. It's my privilege this morning to lead you in our pastoral prayer. As you may or may not know, the first Sunday in November is also designated as a day of prayer for persecuted churches and Christians. So I will also include that in our prayer. And I will also be sorry, I will also be stopping for a minute of silence for those that we remember. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, on this the first Sunday in November, a day designated as a day of prayer for the persecuted church, Christians around the world pray especially for people in these situations. We therefore join hands with our fellow brothers and sisters and come before you, praying for safety and spiritual strength for persecuted believers. You, Lord, are all-powerful and all-knowing. We ask you to give strength to those who are imprisoned or tortured in your name. We pray for those who face being harmed or even killed for you. Oh, give them the power to die for Christ if they need to. Give them your peace even in the midst of war. Give them your smile as they face the enemy scowl. Give them the grace to be Christ's witnesses until the end so that their death will not be a tragedy but be a powerful instrument to break hardened hearts. Father, we thank and praise you for each day you, you in grace have given us. With the Holy Spirit's guiding, teach us to show how not to waste any opportunity to show family, friends and neighbors the love you shower us with, the real reason we are placed here on earth to bring glory and honor to you through how we live and talk. As we look at our community, we continually see the need for us to be a light shining in this dark world. Open the hearts of those hardened by the world around them to see the only true way to peace, your peace. On this Sunday, when we remember those who gave their lives in war, we stop for a moment of personal thanksgiving and remembrance for those brave men and women who paid the ultimate price to maintain our freedoms.
Father, this morning we ask you to be the, with those in Sierra Leone, killed and injured by a tranquil explosion. Work in the hearts of the military leaders in Myanmar to stop the systematic killing of civilians. Father, we as a congregation have needs and joys due to health issues and family. To that end, be with those enjoying an improvement in their health and lifestyle and family, and family situations. We pray for those undergoing treatments or waiting for treatments. Give them patience in each of their situations. Comfort those in mourning, whether their loved one has died recently or some time ago. We ask that you be with those in nursing homes and, and retirement centers. Lord, you know each and every need. We also pray for those affected by the COVID-19, for their family members and for the frontline workers around the world. May the vaccine slow this pandemic and eventually virtually stop it. We pray for Pastor Shannon as she delivers your message this morning. Give her peace as she challenges us, but also gives us a sense of peace as we serve and follow your command to love you above all and our neighbors as ourselves. Father, to you be all glory and praise. Oh, the joy we have as being members of your household of faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the salvation and through your resurrection, the assurance of ours. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who conquered death and is alive forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. This time I invite Pastor Shannon to come forward. Well, good morning and welcome to everyone. I know there's a couple people that I haven't had a chance to uh, talk to yet this morning, but uh, thank you for being here. This is, I think this is the closest that uh, Gratis and Annika have been to the front. <laughs> uh, Wendy's up close too, <laughs> and, and uh, Mary Jane and, and Lori. Um, sometimes, and welcome back to uh, Jim and Sharon. Uh, it's good to have you back, and I'm glad you had such a wonderful, wonderful time. Thanks, Roger, for um, presenting in Flanders Fields for us today, and uh, Dan for finding that that video. Um, it all helps to help us remember. Hear the word of God from the 10th chapter of Matthew, verses 34 to 39. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword, for I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Amen. Please join me for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the words of Jesus that we just heard. Lord, help us to open our hearts to them. Help us to live by them, that we may honor you. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Where is peace? Well, if we look around us, 
the world has some odd ways of hoping for and representing peace. For example, in Scapus, Oregon, on your left, even though the candle factory before which it stood has burned down, this 50-foot former dairy silo was covered with 45,000 pounds of red candle wax to create what they called the peace candle of the world. Pictured beside it on the right is the one from Easton, Pennsylvania, and it's 106 feet, 32 meter high, and it's their version of a peace candle. It is erected over top of the town's Soldiers and Sailors Civil War Memorial every Christmas, which in itself apparently causes some controversy. But they argue that the idea of this structure is to serve as a symbol of peace for all religions and denominations. Of course, we finished constructing our own peace tower in 1927 in Ottawa at the Parliament buildings. And inside that peace tower is housed the memorial chamber, a space dedicated to the memory of those who gave their lives in service to Canada. The United Nations built a peace plaza and a peace bench there on the bottom. And in 1981, instituted an international day of peace every September 21st, heralding 24 hours of nonviolence and ceasefire. The island of Ireland Peace Park built in West Flanders, Belgium, remembers the soldiers of the island of Ireland who died, were wounded, or are missing from the First World War. Poets and artists like Walt Whitman and Vincent van Gogh describe peace as always beautiful and something that can be found even in the storm. Politicians talk a lot about peace. Peace is not absence of conflict. It is the ability to handle conflict by peaceful means. And I'm not sure who coined the quote, being at peace is the ultimate position of power, but it is true enough. How do we do that? How do you and I gain that ultimate position of power? through peace, because in today's scripture, Jesus, the Lord himself, tells us, do not suppose, in other versions of the Bible, it says, do not think, think not, do not assume that I have come to bring peace to the earth. That's a little jarring, isn't it? That statement from our Lord and Savior, do not suppose that Jesus came to bring peace to the earth. How does that work? We know that it was God's great love for us that sent his only son to us. So that when we believe in him, we would have eternal life. And we know that Jesus healed men and women and children and diseases of all kinds, so much so that John tells us that he supposes there are not enough books in the whole world to record what Jesus accomplished. And we know that when he was asked which is the greatest commandment in the law, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's clear that Jesus taught us to love. 
The greatest thing we can do is love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. So how shocking is it that Jesus tells us not to assume that he came to bring peace to this earth? We know that Jesus taught his disciples to forgive their brothers and sisters, not seven times, but 77 times. For forgiving one another is a means through which we strive to obey scriptures like that of Romans, which reminds us, if it is possible, as far as it depends upon you, live at peace with everyone. Being forgiving and loving is a means of keeping the peace, but peace on earth is tenuous at best. There is always conflict on earth. This map is colored according to major wars represented in the, the darkest red. To wars that have resulted with only, only 1,000 to 999 deaths in the past year to minor conflicts and skirmishes pictured in yellow. We should not be surprised or shocked or disappointed when Jesus openly admits, I did not come to bring peace. Because just as he did not release the Jewish nation from Roman rule, he warned them and he warns us. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. The men and women whom we remember today and on the 11th of every November, attest to Christ's words of truth. In 1933, during a period in which there was widespread fear of war in Europe again, the Women's Cooperative Guild began the practice of distributing white poppies as an alternative to red poppies distributed by the Royal British Legion in commemoration of the servicemen who died in the First World War. In 1934, the newly, newly formed Peace Pledge Union, which was the lar largest British peace organization in the interwar years, joined in distributing white poppies and laying white poppy wreaths as a pledge to peace that war must not happen again. And despite their best efforts, the word of the Lord reigns supreme. And it warns us that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The shocking truth is that Jesus said what the Lord God Almighty, maker and creator, judge and deliverer, commanded him to say. What Jesus taught was not his own, but what our Heavenly Father advised him to do. So when Jesus states, when Jesus tells us that he did not come to bring peace, but a sword, and that sword can turn a, man's, a man against his father, that that sword that Jesus brought can turn a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, that the sword which Jesus wields is one that can determine that a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. We know, we can be assured that this is what the Father has commanded. We know this is God's truth. 
Jesus came to seek and save the lost, to do the will and end, to do the will and the work of the Father that all nations would see the salvation of the Lord, thereby destroying the works of the devil. It is Jesus' message of repentance and faith in him as the resurrected Son of God that is the sword that can divide families or bless them with the peace that only Jesus can impart. And perhaps you know what it's like to be divided by that sword. As evangelist D.L. Moody put it, there will be no peace in any soul until it is willing to obey the voice of God. The peace that Jesus offers is reconciling us to the Father through faith. Jesus offers us peace with God through faith in him. Faith in him, the son who gave his life as a sacrifice for our many manifold sins. Jesus, our deliverer, our great high priest, our prince of peace, destroyed the works of the devil. He triumphed over death by the power of God and rose from the dead. When we claim Jesus as our savior, we are justified through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. It is that very peace that we gain through faith in Jesus that can act as a sword dividing our households. Some people seek peace by going for a hike, by sitting on a bench, sitting on a beach, <laughs> they read, might unclutter a space, clean a closet, spend time in nature, and some people go to a spa. And of all the spas that exist in the world, and all of the exotic places you can go to find a spa, to find that peace that some people seek that way. I would have thought in a place like Svalbard, and <laughs> Svalbard is that yellow island up there between Greenland and Russia that you see in the middle of the screen. It is midway between the northern coast of Norway and the North Pole. Surrounded by nothing other than nature, you wouldn't need to seek, I would think, you wouldn't need to seek peace in a spa. Apparently, one spa exists in Svalbard. Amongst the population of about 3,000 people and 300 polar bears. Apparently if you go out of town, you are, you're actually supposed to take a gun with you. As the late Billy Graham put it, the world doesn't give peace. It doesn't matter if you go to the spa in Svalbard or the Caribbean. The world doesn't give peace, for it doesn't have any peace to give. It fights for peace. It negotiates for peace. It maneuvers for peace. But there is no ultimate peace in the world. But Jesus gives peace 
to those who put their trust in him, period. And that peace we know in our souls, that peace we know because we trust in Jesus, it causes problems. It creates schisms because as we mature in the love and knowledge of Christ, we prioritize Jesus. Now, our Good Shepherd, our Mediator and Messiah is not calling us to dislike our family members. For Scripture is clear that we are to honor our fathers and mothers, and we are to love our spouses. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't mean to choke on that one. <clears throat> In the, book, in the book of 1 Timothy, we are warned that anyone who does not provide for the relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. However, that same love and sense of loyalty we feel, or hopefully feel, towards our families should be what motivates us to take up our cross and follow him. Jesus is not teaching salvation by martyrdom. He's saying that we find our lives, we experience deep peace when we practice sacrificial discipleship. As I told those in Bible study group this week, there have been times when I've had to walk away from my family in order to fulfill my responsibilities and to honor God. And if you've been gifted with hospitality, you may have opened up your home according to God's call on your heart. You may have opened up your home to the discomfort of your family. It's taking all those sandwiches or meals or those perfectly baked cookies to the church or an outreach meal that causes your fam family to grumble. I know our kids used to grumble about that. How come they get all the good stuff? <laughs> or they don't, or sometimes you can't even leave any of it at home. If you've given priority to teaching, encouraging, giving, leading, showing mercy, and serving God in any way when it has caused you to make sacrifices for the gospel, that is when we find our lives. That is the peace that acts as a sword. God calls us to focus that vigor we have towards our families, towards our careers, towards our hobbies, to his message. Not as a charity case, not begrudgingly, but out of love. Jesus is our Prince of Peace. He is where we find peace. Coming to faith in Jesus as our Savior is the ultimate position of peace. It is the ultimate position of power. Let us pray. Father God Almighty, help us to find our lives in you. Forgive us for putting others and even things before you. We are not worthy of your goodness. Lord, we know that faith in you sometimes acts like a sword. It divides families and pits one against the other. Father, where that has happened, we ask that you would extend your mercy and bring to salvation those who are not at peace with you. For we know that when our ways please you, you make even our enemies at peace with us. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
As we prepare to come to the communion table, please stand as you are able for the first two verses of I Will Remember Thee. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate a time for war, and a time for peace. Amen. We join our brothers and sisters around the world in remembering God's love and sacrifice at his table of communion. It is that love that extends an invitation to each one of us to share in this meal. To all who earnestly repent of their sins, who intend to lead a new life following the commandment of God by walking in holy ways, draw near with reverence and faith in the redeeming salvation of Jesus with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you aware that we do not deserve to come to your table to eat and to drink in remembrance of you. Instead, we come trusting in the redemption we know through faith in your Son, who died for our sins and was resurrected by the power of God, and who reigns in heaven until he returns. We ask for your forgiveness for all the ways we have fallen short and fallen away from your commands. Have mercy upon us, Father. Forgive us what is past so that we might have a future. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. As you prepare your elements, let me read scripture that reminds us the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it. and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us also give thanks. Let us pray. Lord God Jesus, you endured so much pain of every kind. You experienced such cruelty for our sakes. 
your body paid for our sins once for all. As we grow and mature as believers, we begin to understand the magnitude of what you have done for us. We thank you, and we do this in remembrance of you, Jesus. Amen. Let us eat this bread in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for us, and let us be thankful. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us also give thanks for the cup. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you as the sinless shepherd led by example, you lay down your life for your sheep. As the sacrifice for our sins, you bled so that we might know your peace. We thank you. May our lives demonstrate our gratefulness. Amen. Let us drink this cup in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for us, and let us be thankful. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost for feeding us in these holy mysteries. And please join me in our final three verses of I Will Remember Thee. Please stand. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. <laughs>